you're on a resus shift in the children's ED and you get a pre-hospital pre-alert. A child has been hit by a car and they've got chest wall bruising, they've got a high respiratory rate, low oxygen sats, and you think there's a pretty good chance that they've got some significant chest wall trauma. So you get your trauma chest strain kit out, but you need a quick recap on how to put in a chest strain in a child. So out comes your phone to find a quick paediatric chest strain video. Now, if that sounds familiar, this is the video for you. I'm going to talk you through Teague et al's rule of fours. Now this rule pivots on the number four and it's a brilliant aid memoir for paediatric chest strain insertion. So what you need is firstly a good site, that's the fourth or the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Second thing is a good hole, so it's your site, you push, you sweep and you keep. The third thing is a good tube, so that's four times the endotracheal tube size which is age over four plus four. And the fourth thing you need is a good stop. The tube goes in until the last hole is four centimetres inside the chest. Let's break that down. So firstly, to find the child's fourth or fifth intercostal space, you need to abduct their arm to 90 degrees and then feel for the sternal angle. Lateral to that is the second rib. You slide your finger down over the second rib to the second intercostal space and you walk your fingers down the spaces to the fourth or the fifth space. And then you slide your finger along the space laterally to the mid axillary line. Once you're there, you get your scalpel out and you make a two to three centimetre incision along the upper border of the rib below. Now the reason you go there is because it avoids the neurovascular bundle which runs along the bottom of the rib. That's your sight and after sight it's push. So you get your artery forceps and you use them to blunt dissect through the intercostal muscles by opening and closing the jaws of their forceps. And you keep pushing until you feel a pop and when you hear that pop and you feel that pop you're into the cavity now here's a top tip for you keep the tip of your index finger over the hinge because that stops you pushing the forceps into the chest once you're through into the parietal space once you're in open the jaws of the forceps one last time to really open up that hole you've now made a thoracostomy hole and if the child has a tension pneumothorax or a massive hemothorax this will save that child's life now step three is sweep you push a finger through and you use it to sweep around to clear the path. And that allows air or blood to come out and it also makes space for your chest strain to go in. And then your last step of this part is keep. You need really good finger sweeping to help keep that hole open. Now, once your thoracostomy is made, it's time for a good tube. The size of your chest strain is as simple as four times the endotracheal tube size. So remember that is age over four plus four, and then you multiply that up by four and you round it up to the nearest French size to get your chest drain size. Hold the drain tip with your artery forceps and you gently insert the drain into the hole and you keep rotating it slightly to push it in. Now here's your second top tip. Don't put the jaws of your forceps through the drain side hole because it might be really difficult to unclamp and you might accidentally pull the chest drain out when you try and unclamp them. You'll notice that there are no trocars at all in this video because they shouldn't ever be used to insert a drain. And I was once told that they're only good for using for stakes for growing climbing peas in the garden. So throw them in the bin they are not necessary here at all. Now your last stage is a good stop. The drain really doesn't have to go in very far at all, only as far as the four centimetre marking, and that's four centimetres from the last side hole. Don't push it in any further because it will either cause trauma or it just won't work. Once you've stopped, you then need to secure your tube in place with a simple knot, leave long ends on either side, and you wrap them lattice style around the drain, tie a simple uh, knot at the top, and then repeat with a suture on the other side and then you secure it all in together with two tegaderms opposing each other. Then attach the drain to an underwater seal, make sure that the drain is swinging and have a listen to the chest and check for chest will rise and finally get a chest x-ray and you're done. If you liked this video, you'll love our video on inserting intraosseous needles. Here it is above. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.